Here is another time rate of consolidation example. It is the same profile as the one that we described in the previous video, that is in the previous example, except for one thing. The clay layer rests on rock in this case, instead of on sand. This is the ground surface. This is the clay layer, it's four meters thick. There's a point located 1.6 meters from this interface between the clay and the rock. And we're going to place a fill that is three meters thick and has a unit weight of 15 kilonewton per meter cubed. The fill is sandy. The clay layer is saturated as marked by this water table symbol. The unit weight of the clay saturated is 20. If it were dry, it would be 18, as is denoted here. And the coefficient of consolidation is 0 0.02 meters squared per day. That is for the clay layer. In the previous example, when we had here well-graded sand instead of rock, we found that the effective stress at this point, 50 days after field placement, was 40.2 kPa. And we also found that the degree of consolidation at this point, 50 days after field placement, was 36%. So we're going to compare this with the following questions for this problem. What is the effective stress at point A 50 days after field placement? And what is the degree of consolidation at point A after field placement? Clearly for this case here. That is for clay above rock. Basically the same as before, the effective stress, 0.8, 50 days, is equal to the total stress, 0.8, 50 days, minus the pore pressure, 0.8, 50 days. The total stress at 0.8 at 50 days is equal to the total stress at 0.8 at time equals zero, which is before the fill is placed, plus the fill. And the pore pressure is the summation of the excess pore pressure at that time, at that point, and the hydrostatic pore pressure at that time, at that point. The total stress at time equals zero, which means before the field is placed at point A, is simply 2.4 meters times the saturated unit weight, 20. The load is the height of the fill times the unit weight of the fill, 3 times 15, which is 45. The excess pore pressure at point A at time equal 50 days after fill placement is what we are going to be looking for using the chart. The hydrostatic pore pressure at point A 50 days after fill placement is simply the pressure head, hydrostatic pressure head, which is 2.4 meters times the unit weight of water which we're going to assume to be 10 kilonewton per meter cubed. How do we get this? We use the chart. And to use the chart, we need the parameters associated with the chart. So let's list them. So let's get ZDR. Here's our point. In this particular problem, we only have one drainage boundary, this one right here. Because the K, hydraulic conductivity of the fill, is larger than that of the clay, but the rock has an even smaller, perhaps, hydraulic conductivity than that of the clay. Therefore, this is not a drainage boundary. The closest drainage boundary is therefore this one here, which is 2.4 meters away from the point. So ZDR is 2.4 meters. HDR, longest drainage path. What's the worst place to be if you're a water molecule that wants to escape the clay layer? Well, it would be down here, because you would have to go all the way up to escape through the single and only drainage boundary, 4 meters. The excess pore pressure is what we're looking for here, so we're going to use the chart to get it. The load is 3 times 15, which is 45 kPa. The coefficient of consolidation is given, 0 0.02 meters squared per day. And the time is 50 days. The dimensionless time factor is 0 0.02 times 50 divided by 4 squared, 0 0.0625. 
So with these parameters, we can use the chart. This chart comes with isochrones labeled 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, right? Here's an isochrone that is labeled zero, which is this one right here. This is actually zero plus for us in our nomenclature. This means that at time equals zero plus, which is when the fill is placed, the value of the x-axis is one. Remember the x-axis is ue divided by delta sigma. A value of one means that ue and delta sigma are the same. And that only occurs at the moment the load is placed, which is for us zero plus. So here I have drawn what I believe to be the isochrone for 0 0.0625. That isochrone is to the right of the 0.1 isochrone and to the left of the zero plus isochrone. So now let's go back to our problem so that we can calculate the value of the y-axis. 2.4 divided by 4. This is 0.6. The x-axis value is what we're going to get using the chart, ue divided by delta sigma. So let's do that. The y-axis value is 0.6 right here. And the isochrone, according to what I drew here, is this one. So we're going to move horizontally from 0.6 all the way until we hit the isochrone. And then we drop down to the x-axis. That value is, this is a little slanted, but that's okay. This is 0.9, this is 1. So I would say this is about 0.93. Notice that the UE over delta sigma in the previous example, where we have the clay laying on top of sand, is lower, 0.64. This means that for that problem, more of the excess pore pressure has been dissipated at 50 days than for this problem. And the reason is because we have rock in this problem. That means that we have one drainage boundary. And for the previous problem or previous example, we had two drainage boundaries, which promotes faster consolidation. And so our value, 0.93, is equal to UEA50 divided by the load, and therefore UEA50 is equal to 45 times 0.93, 41.9 kPa. So now we plug this back in here so that we can calculate our effective stress, which is 27.1. KPA. In the previous example, the effective stress at that time was 40.2 kPa. So the particles were able to carry at that time more of the load than do the particles in this example. And the reason is because we have only a single drainage boundary, which is up here. This is not a drainage boundary. So what is the degree of consolidation? The degree of consolidation, point A times 50, is equal to 1 minus the excess pore pressure times 50 divided by delta sigma. 1 minus 41.9 divided by 45, which is 0.07 which is to say 7%. So, for the previous problem where we had two drainage boundaries with sand down here, the degree of consolidation at that point at that time was 36%. However, in this case where we have rock and only one drainage boundary, the degree of consolidation at that point at that time is only 7%. So in conclusion, having one drainage boundary like in the case here, causes a slower consolidation than having two drainage boundaries, which would be the case as in the previous example where we have sand down here.